very interested in art within games, but I've learned that because there's such a, um, if you try to do, um, uh, if, if you were to try to do everything in art, uh, you're not going to get everything done. So I'm going to focus on one part, which is 3D character art pipeline, because what I'm going to be telling you about this can be applied to all other aspects of art within a game. I'm a senior lecturer in, in the Viterbi Engineering Faculty. I've been 20 years in the industry before this, working for THQ, EA, and other places. And this works in large uh, companies as well as small teams. First of all, prototyping is a vital part of any game's evolution. You're part of the conversation. One of the mythologies I love to try and dispel with art teams is that you are at the waiting end um, of, of a process. You're waiting by the phone to get directions on what to build or what to do. Not so. You are actually part of the family helping to discover what the game is about. And I want to teach people specific things that they can do as artists to uh, help the team along. This talk also will be archived. So if I burn through some of these without reading every little bit of text, um, I'm still going to hit the major points. So the takeaway here is also what you learn from doing this is going to make you an invaluable artist in the industry. So this is not just something you do with a team here. The answer, of course, is we have no approved concept art or finished game idea. What do we do? All right, but percentages again. It's not a Boolean operation of nothing or everything. You're waiting until you get it, until other, uh, other people finish their design or finish this or finish that, and then you can begin. That's, that's not a setup you want to go for. Um, there are still basic tenets known about the game, the genre. You need to know if it's a runner, fighting, platformer. They're probably not going to switch midstream. The multiplayer versus the solo experience, whether something's cartoony or realistic, and to some extent, the camera distance. So this is a great time to get into the conversation with the art lead and the designer to kind of just understand the game a little bit better. Uh, because then you can identify as an artist that the character needs, which examples follow. First of all, start low res, not detailed. A lot of people think this is the time to show their full skill level in the first deliverable. Not so. You need to make sure you get something in the game so that engineering can start putting it in the place that they need and the designers can gauge whether the whole thing works or not. So really the job here is to get um, a proper camera distance, whether it's a God's eye view, a three quarters view over the shoulder, and understand that just a basic base mesh model is all you need right now to see something in game. So long before you get to the detailing of something you think you need, you will determine what you actually need and they put in the game. So four goals for the 3D modeler in a game pipeline would be proportions, basic color palette, readability, and this character systems I talk about. First of all, step one, proportions. Just put something in the game, please. Try to get a box, and then if the box is uh, okay and works, try to get a base model, and then go from there. So again, this, this is about engendering a conversation with all the other members of the team to understand the game that's going on. So if you can't, if you don't have one readily done, there's plenty of places you can grab a free online model close to your character description. A biped remains a biped, a quadruped remains a quadruped, etc. cetera. Uh, very casual drive-by look for things online gave me these two areas and poly count. There are others. There is no one focus of where the free models are. The internet is vast. So anyone can find something within five minutes. The advantage here is if the model's already built, especially when you've done before that approximates your character, chances are that the UVs are already done as well. That's gonna help you tremendously. And this is set up not to be rigged, but to be sculpted and then re-exported into the game so you can see whether or not the basic proportions work. So semi-realistic there on the left and chibi there on the right. So this is something that people need to eke out very quickly. Prove your pipeline. Look what happened here when someone finally exported the base, the basketball player onto the court. This is something that should be discovered way early on. So step two, the palette. This is something where you don't actually need your model. You can do it with base boxes approximating the color once you have a, a very simple concept character sketch. In fact, you could rig it if need be. The blocks will inform. Look at the bunch of block characters here in the basketball game. It will actually help you understand how to build a better model over time, and more specifically, the readability, meaning you've got to get the artist, if possible, to upload to a local build, unless, uh, unless it's impossible, and I have work around, workarounds for that. So make mistakes, best to do this up front, but if you can get the artist to dedicate things uh, via version control, perfect. So 
what I'm battling here is that people think they're working for the game when they only look at something in Maya or in Photoshop. In fact, it's not true. I could look at this character and sit and detail the belt buckle, but the minute I put it into the game, I see I've been wasting my time. Obviously not a game I've worked on. But when you can't do a local build, here's what you can do. Take a screenshot of it or render out a PNG file and composite it over the background. This will give you an artist um, real good feedback of what not to worry about. The belt buckle is not an issue in this case. And yet, if you keep it in Maya, of course it is. And I still see people going in and doing detailing at this, at this level. So here's a low res model I used in a game here on the left. And it informed me that in fact, the face and the hands needed to be updated there on the right, but the dress did not. So here's the character systems I wanted to talk about. This is something that the artist, the 3D character artist can actually uh, fire back to the team or answer or raise a polite flag about, wait a minute, are we taking care of these systems? So there's crowd systems, there's leveling up systems, there's external props for the character. And you need to, as, a as part of the art team, to kind of just flag this and go, is this a system we need to worry about or to prove? So for instance, um, working on a basketball game there, you've got a basketball and people thought, oh, well, it's a basketball, we'll do physics. Not very good because physics opens a whole can of worms for problems and complications. Instead, the solution was simply make it part of the animated rig. So the ball actually ne never has any physics. However, there's a moment where it leaves the character's fingers on a layup and instead it flashes to a totally new basketball that's on a parabola curve while we send this one on the rig 10 feet below the ground. So it's a sleight of hand. It's a, it's a, a digital prestigitation. So there's other things such as if you have a crowd system or if you have a changing clothing or a leveling up system by having epaulets or a bigger hat, these are things that need to be worked out ASAP by simply trying to trade out new shaders. You can change the skin color and the hair color, but not the clothing, or make a base model that's bald and you can replace hair bits or hats or what have you. You can even take the same texture and put it on very low res different heads, uh, ovoid, more squarish, more circular, to get a whole crowd system. Uh, you can also do just half the UV, so you only have to paint half the textures. For those of you that are worried about time, there's projection techniques where it actually takes concept art and can bake it as textures onto a character, done with great success on one of our AGPs from last year, Beast of Marvia. And there's also a 3D paint system within Maya where you can paint over some of the scenes. You should simply do a Google search and find examples for that. So this concept art can be projected and baked onto the textures, and this allows you to quickly switch out the textures or update them without spending a lot of time. So the four goals for a 3D modeler in a game pipeline that will be informative and help themselves is setting up proportions quickly, the color palette, the readability, and sussing character systems that maybe no one's thought about yet, but the game will need. And this, of course, allows uh, the effect it rather, it, it, it uh, engenders the effect of having a very um, understandable folder structure. It also uh, gets team communication going. It also accommodates many artists working asynchronously and the great win for everybody, all constant and automated upgrades to the game. Uh, that's my talk and uh, happy game.